Well, the dominance of the Omicron variant of COVID-19 led to several countries adjusting their response. The positive note is its symptoms appear to be less severe and hospitalizations and deaths are lower than previous variants. But at the same time, its appearance has led to a surge in infections requiring millions of people to isolate themselves. Several countries have responded by reducing the isolation period for those infected, a decision that early evidence appears to justify. Professor Titus Ibekwe, public health physician, uh, ENT surgeon, joins us from Abuja studio for more on this. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Millicent, for having me. All right. I'd like to start perhaps on the global look, outlook. Um, your take on some of the countries around the world who are now lifting the ban on masking, uh, for instance, and some others taking off all other restrictions. That's on the one hand. And then you look at uh, Nigeria's cases that are dropping, 22 as of last night, and what you think we should be doing in terms of our response. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, um, Millicent. Well, it's said that um, there's no condition that is permanent. What is uh, permanent is change. So um, people and society tend to adjust based um, on the information available to them. Um, United Kingdom is, is a case study, at least they are very close to us. Um, that have um, taken some measures which uh, Hitato would have been seen to be counterproductive. Um, it's a little U-turn to, to the norm of uh, um, the pharmaceutical measures. We we'll talk of masking, which is on top there, then physical distancing and regular cleansing. But what are they talking about now? Um, their authorities are thinking that it is time for them to relax the issue of uh, masking. Um, and this is predicated on um, uh, certain scientifically based information before them. Um, one looking at their data, their database, they realize that um, at least 64% of uh, the UK population have been fully vaccinated and also had um, their booster doses when you talk of vaccination. Uh, at the same time, they have looked inward and um, felt that the, the pressure in the health system has relaxed to some reasonable level. And of course, the rate of infection is plateauing on a regular basis. You know. So um, this put together, including some other information before them, uh, led to their taking this decision. But again, it is not total, because we know that um, there are still provisors there. Unfortunately, those provisors are not uh, being emphasized. It is still there that um, um, this is a discretion of institutions. We know that blue chip companies within the United Kingdom, like the very big shopping malls and all those, uh, still maintain the same masking rules, you know, um, and um, any institution that are not comfortable, and it is also advised that in any crowded place, people are still advised to use their mask. In fact, the authorities in London has come out to state clearly that if you got to use their, their metro, their train system, you must use your mask, you know. And um, so looking at these situations holistically, it also has some scientific basis and backgrounds. We have spoken about Omicron. Um, could this be a blessing in disguise? And the answer, partly, we said last time, is yes. Because if you look at uh, the features of Omicron virus compared to the previous ones, the rate of virulence here is um, a lot, lot not comparable to um, the, the Delta and the very serious variant that we have in the past. R Professor Ibekwe, the rate of infection is yes. very high. S sorry to know. cut in, and this is just because we're approaching our break now. I, I also want to ask you, um, in terms of the, the virus mutations, do you think that it also affected the changes in terms of the isolation quarantine time? If you recall, uh, it was 14 days, and now we're about seven days. Absolutely right. So... Um, it is also based on those scientific findings. In fact, to bring the 
information closer home. At the onset in 2020, 2019, 2020 in Wuhan, it used to be three weeks quarantine, you know. From there, it dropped to two weeks. Um, and based on scientific findings, I think there are some paper done here, a huge work that was done by um, uh, Akio Shibogo and co, uh, including the current Lagos State Commissioner, a, a, a concerted work that they have published. So this data now shows that um, the, 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 the PCR zero conversion is, has dropped to 10 days, not necessarily the two weeks that we used to observe here. So that predicted to settling with 10 days now, still officially in Nigeria. And I know that a lot of countries are moving towards seven days and even considering five days based on what they're having. So the Omicron itself um, being everywhere and um, being having mild infection invariably is, is giving a lot of people uh, what we call herd immunity. But the reality is that how long and how sustainable the herd immunity is is not still quite clear. But it has um, it showed some some good light, um, you know, at the end of the tunnel, because it's like displacing the the, the current very virulent uh, type that we had earlier on. And over time, if mutation happen and we have even milder cases, time will come when COVID-19 will just be like ordinary flu around us, and that means. Um, that the world has won eventually. So let's watch out and see what pans out in the United Kingdom. But the, the caution there is that they have to do this with caution because their immunity level and not be compared to those of us here in Africa that have a lot of cross immunity from other types of similar infections that is around us all the time that we have had when you compare to somebody who is in a typical setting like the United Kingdom. Mm. I don't think it's the same. So. They just have to be very careful and watch right. the situation as, as it plays out. We appreciate your time always on the program. Many thanks. Professor Titus Sibikwe is a public health physician, ENT surgeon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Millicent, for having me once again. Well, still to come, UK's COVID-19 Human Challenge Study has reached its first milestone. Find out more when we return.